Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be taking some of the most popular modern toys and turning them into horrifying monsters. Some of which are cute, some of which are weird, and some of which are properly scary on their own. But before I get to the monster making, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. You know what makes life a lot less scary? Feeling competent, like you know what you're doing. So if there's any skills that you guys want to learn, I highly recommend Skillshare. There's even classes specific on making YouTube videos. I've been watching this class on how to make animated YouTube videos because it's something I'm interested in lately. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, art, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to those classes and it's less than $10 a month. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare right now and the first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the description will get a two month free trial. Thank you so much to Skillshare for supporting the channel. Okay, so this first toy is actually the inspiration for the entire video and the reason that I revisited this idea. Some of you guys may have noticed that I've actually done a toys turned terrifying video before. Good luck saying that one five times fast. Um, but that time I used pretty standard and classic toys, uh, especially Barbie, for example. Um, whereas in this video, this was actually inspired by a toy that honestly is so creepy and unsettling by itself. I actually had a challenge making it worse. This is called a neonate. Just look at this thing. So obviously baby dolls aren't weird for um, kids to want to play with and it's, it's really not strange at all, especially because a lot of kids have baby siblings. It's like just part of their life. Nothing weird about that. But the weird thing about this one is that it's supposed to be like a baby that's not yet born. It still has an umbilical cord kind of attached and it's like in this plastic womb, which makes it so medical and disturbing. And then the fact that they have like these big anime eyes and pastel colors and a pacifier inside, I, it just, Everything about it is like really uncanny and bizarre and I just don't know what the idea is. Also, could you check out this description on the official brand's website for what this thing is and what they wanted to say about it? Is there anything worse than this? Warning, Navary is a compulsive dancer, includes one gnarly baby, one umbilical cord, one diaper, may include one poo if you're lucky, one drippity drop tube, one birth certificate, one neonate baby picture, one nursery card, and one vaccination form, one tooth, and a hook to remove tooth. So yeah, basically I wanted to put this one in front because I feel like I was barely able to make it look any scarier than it already was. There's something so off-putting about the original product that my little demon baby um, who's totally awake and aware of you in the womb is really, really not that bad compared to what was actually on the product description of the page and uh, everything about everything about this baby. So personally, this is actually my least favorite redesign in the whole batch because like I said, I don't actually think I made it scarier. In some ways, I would rather spend time with this baby. Like, I, I hate to say it, demon baby, but you actually have uh, a more calming presence than than the neonate baby itself. Um, so I guess I failed you, but at least at least she's looking kind of interesting. I mean, uh, she looks like some Invader Zim looking baby with gray pigtails. I was trying to emulate the weird little floofs of hair that they have on all of these little babies and trying to make it look a little bit more like a horn. But like I said, a literal demon baby is less scary than this original toy. So I feel like this is actually the biggest failure in the video. Next up is the LOL Surprise Doll Under Wraps, and at first this doll doesn't really look scary at all, and it doesn't really have a place here, but I will say that the Under Wraps specifically type of LOL doll really caught my attention for a few reasons. Now, uh, the neonate baby really creeped me out because again, it was so medical and strange and uncanny, and also I'm very creeped out by like pregnancy and birth and all the finer details of that. So that's kind of why that one worked for me. Now this one works for me because I personally am very prone to claustrophobia and the LOL surprise dolls under wraps um, are not only encased in this weird sort of pill shaped uh, prison, but they're also completely encased in a skin tight layer of plastic so that you can't see what the doll looks like until you take the head and body part. It's basically like a 
whole cast um, of plastic over top of them. And weirdly enough, the eyes specifically are like sort of cut out, so it looks like someone just pasted plastic over both of their eyes. Something about this really unsettled me, so my whole strategy with this one was just to do a sort of cute um, feminine outfit, a uh, little creepy, a little Victorian vibes. Um, I wanted to take the girly dresses and stuff that these LOL dolls are often shown in and just make it a little creepier by giving it more of a, a Victorian dolly look. And then I kept on this um, plastic head that is separate from the body cast thing that they're completely encased in. And I think it turned her into a pretty convincing horror movie character. I wanted to make it look sort of uncomfortable for her. Like it's something that would be difficult to breathe in. So that's kind of uncomfortable, but she also kind of looks like a mask killer. It's like she's straight out of the purge or something. So I feel like it kind of works on both levels. Like, is she the victim? Is she the threat? Like, I don't really know. <laughs> it's kind of up to uh, your imagination or whatever story I could cook up for her. Um, but I feel like the character design works on that level at least. Um, honestly, yeah, these blank faces, I'm not... I'm not crazy about them. It's pretty creepy. Um, I understand the whole concept, but like, I gotta feel like there's a better way to hide their identity than having a another doll sort of cast over top of them uh, to obscure which ones you're getting. It's just really strange. So I guess they do have to be more inventive to stop people from uh, trying to figure out what doll is in there because you know how collectors get. They they're always the ones who tear open these like blind grab uh, situations. I always got really annoyed about that because I like buying those things. I like being surprised and uh, at our like local store people would always like rip into them to see what's in there before buying them and then they just leave the worst ones for last. So with this design in the end, I ended up liking it quite a bit. Uh, it does look pretty different from the um, LOL surprise doll itself, but I feel like because the whole concept of the horror here comes from the actual styling of the toy, I felt like it was pretty successful and I was relatively happy with it in the end. Last but certainly not least is the extremely cute Pomzi. Now this is a pretty simple idea and it makes sense why it would be popular. It's just the cutest parts of a cat arguably, which is their fuzzy face and ears and then their fuzzy tail. And then they just cut out anything that they felt they didn't need. So they you end up with this basically like pom-pom shaped animal with a tail on the end. I also suspect these are a lot easier to manufacture when there's no limbs that you have to attach. Um, but when you really think about it, this is is quite a creepy design. I mean, this is, it kind of reminds me of like what could happen if uh, animal selective breeding gets too out of control. Like uh, a lot of animals, like the smush face kitties and um, pugs and stuff, they're, they're bred in a way to be as cute as possible to humans, but then they end up having really awful uh, problems with their health um, because we've sort of selfishly made them as cute as possible. So that's kind of the angle I wanted to go for the horror here because the original product is actually very cute. It just looks very sweet and I actually had a lot of trouble making it look scary. Um, but my end idea for this was like, this is a cat whose uh, soul is sort of a, this intact cat and you can see it in the shadow on the ground, but something has happened to um, take its body from it and thus all of its, you know, ability to independently move and just basically made it into this sort of sad wandering soul. Um, it's kind of like a ghost, I guess. Uh, it has sort of a surreal look to it. Originally, I was going to have it just be the head and the tail, and then you'd only see the rest of the body in the shadow. And then I did decide at the end to connect the tail to the head um, because I thought that made it look even more bizarre and creepy. I had the hardest time with this one um, actually like deciding on what I wanted to do. I already felt sort of dissatisfied with my first drawing for the video, so I was not going to let this one uh, turn out in a way that I didn't like. Um, this strange cat tail ghost thing, a sort of cat snake situation that I made is actually pretty interesting. I kind of like how it turned out and this is one of those cases where like I was having such a miserable time with it and I kept throwing out all my sketches and my concepts and I ended up landing on something that while it's not like 
horror scary in the way that like it'll keep you up at night or anything it is unsettling in a sense that might sort of stick with you um and sometimes that kind of horror is good too this is actually a tip for anyone who likes to do horror and scary stuff remember that there's a whole rainbow of different types of scary or horror feelings and sometimes you just want to go for a low-key surrealistic spooky rather than uh you know blood guts and, and agony all the time if not to diversify your stories maybe just for your own mental health. So I patched on a bunch of colors onto the gray and then just sort of smoothed them out and overlaid them so that it had a sort of nod to the rainbowy colors of the original toy and then I was done. So that does it for this Creepify video. Was I able to scare you? Fun fact, I was actually spooking myself so much during this video that when someone popped in to check on me in my room, I literally screamed. So uh, if the drawings don't scare you, well, at least they scared one person, me. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Check out Skillshare in the description below and I will see you in the next video. A big thank you to all of my patrons, including Bella Story, Kelpompom, Cassitarius, Clockwork Construct, Dionysus, Hagarillus, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Alvin, Hope Chilsom, Imagine Creation, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Carla Tapia, Cat Did That, Q Did It, Megan Claire, Midnight Doodles, Micah Dactyl, Okamore, Ollie, Rome Espinoza, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, The Artsy Moose, Your Boy ST, and Zoe Stardust.